What is up, Buck? I'm Doug with Dini in the garage, and I am blessed to be standing on a driveway surrounded by two of the greatest vehicles an American automaker has ever produced. The Jeep Grand Cherokee WJ. Not only am I blessed to have two of them, but I got one of each, a 4.7 and a 4 liter. Now, all these are amazing vehicles, and I highly recommend if you have the means to pick one up at some point in your life. They are Chrysler products, which means the electronics, and that's on a good day. So what we're gonna do today is go over every single ground wire in this Jeep, where it is, and more importantly, what it goes to. And I'm aware that if you're watching this video, there's a very good chance that you are elbow deep in a Jeep electrical issue and you don't want a lot of extra talking, you just want the information. I'm gonna do my best to do that in this video, but it's a lot of info, so bear with me. I'll do my best. Additionally, there will be chapters down below for where each ground is in the video. Now, generally speaking, the 4.7 and the 4 liter are pretty darn similar, but there are some slight variations in the grounds. Today, we're gonna go over all the grounds for the 4.7. I will mention the 4 liter grounds, but I'm not gonna show them. We'll do a whole separate video just on the 4 liter. Final note, this is a work Jeep and a plow Jeep and the definition of a beater. You're about to see some real ugly stuff in there if you're easily squeamish video might not be for you. All right, the first ground we're gonna talk about is labeled G100 in the factory service manual. It is your main engine ground. On the 4.7, it's right here. If you have your stock air box on, you're gonna have to take that off, but it's this stud right here behind your engine oil dipstick. It goes to this insulated, not braided, insulated ground wire which goes back behind your PCM. You can kind of see it, not this one. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. It disappears right back there. See it? So if you're having engine grounding issues, that's your guy. The next ground we're going after is your main battery ground labeled G01 in the factory service manual. It's over here on your passenger side fender, right up at the front. You'll know that you have the main battery ground because it's about a four gauge insulated wire. It comes through here, joins up with your battery harness here, and ends up connecting to your battery up here. Grounds number 102, 103, and 104 are all on the engine block. And your best bet's to lift the body up, not the axles. Just get the body up off the axle a little bit. It'll give you some more room. Alrighty, here we are under the passenger side of the Jeep. Let's shoot the elephant in the room before we get started. Yes, my springs are full of tennis balls. No, I don't run a front sway bar. Yes, my motor mounts are shot. No, I don't plan on fixing any of the oil leaks. That's free rust proofing. Now, if you locate your thermostat housing and you move directly behind that to your motor mount and then move directly behind that, you'll find a stud on the side of your block. First thing notable about this ground is that big black wire coming in from the right. That's your main battery ground down to your block. The remainder of the grounds on that stud are Geo2 and Geo3 on this Jeep. On later models, I think after 02 or the halfway point in 02 where they crossed everything over, those two grounds are separated. One is where I showed you right behind the front motor mount. And then the next ground is actually about six inches, six, eight inches back. Both of these grounds service the PCM and they also both service uh, various transmission things like line pressure sensors or speed sensors. So if you're having PCM issues or transmission issues, look at your 103 and your 102 grounds. All right, 102 and 103 were over there. 104, you gotta get here. It's even easier to get to than the others. You can jack it up if you want to, but it's not essential. We're gonna scooch ourselves under here. Oh, get the light of wisdom out right there. Can you see it? Is ground 104. Ground 104 has the notable distinction of going to your AC compressor clutch, as well as your O2 sensors. So if you keep throwing O2 sensor codes and you put new O2 sensors in and they're just not working right, ground 104. Now, G105 is a tragic story. I looked for it for months, years possibly, before I finally found the information that told me it was only for the diesels, the WG that they got over in Europe. Only time I've ever been jealous of a European. Now ground 106 and 107 share the same stud. They are both here on your driver's side fender. I actually have an additional big ground going into my cab for a power inverter, but you're gonna have one eyelet with a single black wire and one with two black and orange wires. Now the two black and orange wires are for your ABS. That's the only ground and it's a dedicated ground for the ABS. So if you're having ABS problems, 
106. 107 though? Oh man, does 107 cover a lot of stuff. Let's go over it. 107 is gonna be that single insulated black ground. Left side, headlights, everything there, blinkers, sprites, everything, as well as the wiper motor and both window washer motors. So if you're having a problem with headlights not working or one of your blinkers not working or dim headlights, 107. And because one is the loneliest number, 107 has a passenger side counterpart, not to be confused with the main battery ground that we discussed at the beginning of the video. It's back up behind the power distribution unit right here. This one is a single eyelet with two terminals coming off and then two wires coming out of each terminal. And this one also covers a lot of kind of random things just like the other side. Obviously it does your headlights, but it also covers speed servo, your body control module, your coolant level sensor, the trans control a inside the power distribution unit as well as the hydraulic cooling fan module and your radiator fan speed control so if you're having issues with any of those components and you can't figure it out 108 G300 is under your front passenger side seat. You can get at it just by removing that trim piece, but if you want to service it, you're going to need a 15 millimeter wrench or socket to remove the seat, but here she is. You see that little guy? It's hard to see, but it is a single eyelet with two terminals coming off. Mine is extremely dirty. I should really pull this seat out and clean it, but that is responsible for a whole host of things. Specifically, passenger side power seat, driver and passenger door module, right rear lamp assembly, radio amplifier, and your rear power outlet. That's the one in the cargo area. And I'll bet you can guess where 301 is, exact same spot, but on the driver's side, and there she goes. That one is responsible for fuel pump, driver's power seat, lift gate, a jar switch, lift gate leg lock actuator, rear wiper motor, brake lamp switch, license plate light, rear window defroster, sunroof, park neutral switch. So that's gonna be your sa neutral safety switch. So if you can't start your Jeep in park and you have to put it in neutral, maybe check your 301. Vehicle information center, third light, and your auto dim rear view mirror. All right, G200 and 201 are underneath the center console, right about here. You can access them by pulling this guy out, two screws, one there and one up in the front under that dime. And once that thing's out, you can see the grounds. If you're gonna service them, you probably wanna continue taking the whole center console out. But right there is 201, and right there is 200. Now 200 is another absolutely massive one. It specifically, it covers. Ignition switch to the BCM. It's a ground for your skim unit. It is your heated seats, your parking lamp relay, your interior lighting, shifter panel lights, instrument panel cluster, turn signal indicators on dash, four wheel drive indicator, manual temperature controls, your temperature valve actuator, your auto zone climate blower and controls, your front power outlet and your cigar lighter. Some of that was a little bit esoteric, but long story short, all the stuff inside for the most part goes through 200. If cleaning 200 doesn't fix it, I don't know, sell the Jeep or something. And then 201 is another dedicated ground that is just for your ABS unit. So if you have an ABS light on and you replace your clock spring and still going, try 201. I want to show you two more grounds that are not listed by the FSM. I think because they're just sort of basic grounds to keep the whole vehicle grounded and not for specific components, but still you're going to want to know about them. The first one is on top of the motor over here. I mentioned it briefly before. It's this firewall ground right here. This actually goes to a Y, one side. Grounds over here. You see that stud right there? Right there with the nut on it, my fingers wiggling at? That holds down the last coil pack on that side of the motor. So that firewall ground has a Y that goes to the back coil pack on each side and it just sits on top of the coil pack on the stud and then the nut goes on it. And then the next one is right here underneath your passenger side front door, right by your transmission cross member. You're gonna see on the exhaust, there's a clamp from the factory. Focus, better. It goes from the body right there 
to this exhaust clamp. Mine's routed off. And then it comes over here and it goes up to the starter. On the four liter, that's actually listed as G100. It's not listed at all in the FSM for the 4.7. Again, I think it's just a general ground and doesn't have a specific purpose. But I have heard people say that if they're having radio issues in their WJ, whether it's making a lot of static or background noise or speakers aren't working, apparently that ground can affect that. I haven't had that issue myself, never confirmed it, but there are a lot of folks on the forum saying radio issues, go find that exhaust ground. Alrighty friends, that's all I have for you on the grounds that you will find in your Grand Cherokee with a 4.7 liter V8 from 1999 to 2004. There may be some small discrepancies between the locations I showed you and the locations you'll find on a late 02 and 03 or an 04, but everything's gonna be in the general area, specifically that G102 and G103 ground is separated in the later years. Additionally, the verbal descriptions I gave of what each ground services is not gonna be as accurate as the written description I had on the screen or the written description that I'm gonna put in a document to cover all of this information. I will then take that document and I will either make it a Google Doc down in the description or you can go to my website, monkeywiththetoolbox.com. I have a number of documents from the 10 years we've been making videos, schematics and diagrams, and I will add the 4.7 liter V8 ground information there as soon as I can. Additionally, if you have any questions, if any of the ground locations or what they service was unclear in the video, by all means, leave me a comment down there in the squawk boxes. If I don't have an answer for you, I guarantee someone in the amazing d &E Jeep Grand Cherokee WJ community will be able to get you the information that you so desperately seek. Additionally, as promised at the beginning of the video, I will be doing a full video in the exact same style on the four liter Grand Cherokee. I have a 2000 here with the four liter. I will go over every single ground, even the ones that are similar between the 4.7 and the 4.0, so we have a complete video on that. Unfortunately, it won't be my next video. Why? Well, the wife's JL is having a little cooling system issue, so I bought the vacuum coolant filler test checker, and I'm probably gonna do a video on that because unfortunately, these JLUs with the two liter turbo do have some cooling system issues. Why does every Jeep that comes into my life have cooling system issues? And so we're gonna fix that and I thought I might as well do a video on it since it's a common issue. Maybe we can help some other folks out there. So let me get this thing healthy again and then we'll do a four liter video. When was the last time we did a four liter video? I started this channel on four liter videos and then I don't know what happened, but anyway, if you want to see that video, I think the best thing for you to do would be to subscribe. That way you know you don't miss it. Leave me a comment down there in the squawk boxes. Let me know what issues you've solved on your Grand Cherokee by cleaning a ground. And that is not an idle request. I desperately want to know because the electrical issues in these Jeeps can so often be solved by tracking down the ground. I cannot tell you how many times either I personally or somebody that I know has replaced blower motors and this and that and the third and replaced them two and three times before they realize bad ground and I dropped my glasses oh well as a final note if you will engage me in some shameless self-promotion I do have another new channel that I've been working on this is one that's been in the works for a very long time has nothing to do with cars at all it is strictly history it is called the Doug Moore it'll be linked where links go it'll also be down there in the description if you like what I do and you like history, go check out something on the Dunmore. You're gonna probably find that interesting. Uh, if you're into automotive history, I'll leave a link here to the history videos I've done on this channel previously. Look out for a JL cooling video. Subscribe if you wanna see the four liter ground video. Thanks so much. I cannot wait to see y'all on the next one.